In this video, I'm going to go through some aspects of, of Dirac notation or bracket notation. And I want to uh, lead this into then a separate video, which will be about normalization. So when we have bracket notation, we're going to denote our bras this way and our kets this way. And so in this case, I'm going to specifically think, be thinking about a spin one half system. So spin up, spin down, and we can use the Z basis. So this basis here, we can think about being spin up or spin down in the Z direction. So if we use subscripts of X or Y, it would imply we're using that basis. So now when we have a ket state, we can create a corresponding bra state. Now these are not identical. They are not the same thing exactly, but there's a relationship between them. So in order to do this, we can create our corresponding state up here. These basis vectors are going to transform from ket to bra basis vectors. So that, that part, all we've done is change the, the notation. Later, we're going to use some other ways of representing this, such as vectors explicitly in a matrix normalization, and these will be represented differently. It's not only just a change in the, the symbol. But now we have these coefficients, and in this case, this represents just some scalar coefficients. Remember that in quantum mechanics, all of our scalars can be complex, usually. So when we're uh, converting from our ket state to our bra state, we actually need to complex conjugate these coefficients. So this becomes A star, and this is going to be B star. So that's how we create a corresponding bra state to a ket state. And you can imagine if we have a bra state and we want to create a ket state, again, we complex conjugate our coefficients and we just flip our basis vectors from being um, the bra basis vectors to the ket basis vectors. So now a third thing to talk about here is the idea of the inner product where we have a bra, ket, so bracket. And the idea of an inner product is you can think about this as a dot product. So if we were to dot product two vectors, that's talking about the overlap in a way. How much are those vectors going in the same direction? So if I take two uh, unit vectors, so for instance, I hat, not in this case square root of negative one, but just in the i direction, dot product with i hat, in this case, we know that those two vectors go in the same direction. They each have a length of one. So this is going to be one. If instead I have i hat dot product with j hat, we know that that's going to be zero because those two vectors are perpendicular to one another. So this is really the same thing in a way. But now this is more complicated. When we think about dot products, we're typically thinking about directions. And the idea of an inner product is a little more general. So when we have an inner product, that, that has meaning. And we can think about the inner product between spin up in our bra space and then in our ket space. And that's like this. These are effectively, again, not quite the same vector, but corresponding that this is going to be one. And when they are not the same basis vector, so for instance, spin up and spin down, that's going to be zero. And this sort of, of notation, this sort of saying, OK, is this going to be um, 0 or 1, when they're basis vectors, this is really easy to work with. And as shown elsewhere, we need to break a general state into the basis vectors to use Dirac notation to actually do these types of calculations. So the next thing in a separate video to think about is how we actually normalize these cat states.